called the broker up. I said, Griffin, buy. He said, buy what? I said, you know what to buy. Buy Zuck. <laughs> he says, how do you spell that? I said, Z-U-C-K. He said, that's not the, the ticker. I said, Griffin, call Zuck and tell him I want some shares. And so we bought some shares. And I, I think we're up <laughs> double from where we bought. It's Friday. We're reacting to the news. Uh, welcome, fellas. Uh, let's go through the stories. First of all, Facebook stock is soaring. It's up 43% in the last month. Uh, Suli's getting rich off of it. Fellas, did you call it? Did you know that Facebook was going to rebound? Right now, Facebook, like I, I, I haven't bought ads on it recently, Sean, but I was talking to some of my folks who worked with you on the Milk Road. And I was talking to some of the people who worked at HubSpot, who are the people who worked on the hustle at HubSpot. Facebook ads are killing it. They seem like they're working really nicely. Like when I was running it, it was like, you know, we are acquiring users for like three or four dollars. And then nowadays it's back down to like 150 when we first started. So it's kind of easy to see, I guess. What about you? Uh, yeah, I, I, I bet on it. So I took, uh, I don't know, 250,000, uh, dollars, like, I don't know, three or four months ago. And I bought Meta because I was like, why is everybody down on Meta? And I was like, did they forget the number one rule? You don't bet against Zuck. And um, like, you know, to anybody who's like, oh, but the, you know, the metaverse, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I just send them the video clip of Mark Zuckerberg doing MMA. And I'm like, <laughs> this is who you're trying to bet against? The guy that since age 18 has just been like dominating everything he's tried to do. The guy who's created the biggest social network ever, then bought all of his competitors and killed you know, every everybody else who tried to compete with him, including Google, uh, when they try to compete with him on social. And now he trains MMA. And before that, he learned to hunt and speak Chinese fluently. You think this guy's just going to lose money because Apple changed their cookie policy or whatever? Get out of here with that. No way. And so uh, called the broker up. I said, Griffin, bye. He said, buy what? I said, you know what to buy. Buy Zuck. <laughs> he says, how do you spell that? I said, Z-U-C-K. He said, that's not the ticker. I said, Griffin, call Zuck and tell him I want some shares. And so we bought some shares. And I, I think we're up double from where we bought. I don't know where, I, I don't know exactly. I think it's 80. I'm up 80% on that. That Sean and, Sean and I use the same guy, by Let the way. Check. We, both use, we both use Griffin. What did Griffin say? Let me. I mean, I actually check the number so I don't. I don't misquote myself here. Did he? Did he um, say, "Are you sure, Sean?" Or is he goes, "Yes, sir." And go go and do it. Well, he texted me the other day. He goes, "Great call on Meta," and I go, "Thank you for the compliment because I've lost a lot of money this year." And he goes, <laughs> yeah. that's why I sent this. <laughs> okay, not quite double, but uh, but close. Um, we're, we're that's good. We, we we will be double. So we're up fifty. Uh, only only fifty percent, so so a little bit a little bit less than I thought. Fifty percent, still still not bad in a couple months. Dude, Sarah started working at Sarah used to work at Facebook in two thousand and twelve, and I was like doing some math about what she would have. Or, yeah, two thousand twelve. She started. Or, sorry, fourteen. She started working there, and I was doing the math on like where she would be if she just stayed there. And we were talking about it, and it was like, well, pro, you would have gotten fairly wealthy con like her job there was like how do i make like a sticker emoji that gets people in brazil to share more selfies so it's like <laughs> you know you want to like you're going to want to like kill yourself and this is whack and lame but like they pay for your lunch and you get to, your <laughs> you get our oil change and like that stock back then was only $47 at its peak was $372 i mean that's pretty sick but yeah man yeah. like Facebook's killer. Never bet against them. Dude, when we were uh, going through our sale process, Facebook was one of the potential buyers. They offered what the year, highest 18? deal. Uh, no, no. This was 2019, 2020, something like that. 19, I think. Okay. So uh, back then, it was $200. Yeah. So we. And so it's it's good that the stock is down from when we would have got acquired because it was, you know, stock was a, a significant part of the deal. But um, we were, the, the difference of talent quality between we interviewed with, uh, we talked to YouTube, we talked to, to Twitch, where we ended up going to Facebook, to Discord, to a bunch of other players, and Facebook was so much more, so much better, so much more impressive. I was like, um, okay, you know, like if I was just going off of 
who, what talent would we be around? It's not even close. Like the numbers are not even cl- the, like the math of, of the difference of these offers is not even close. But I was yeah optimizing a lot for of other things. A lot of people who I've who I've talked with who work at Facebook, they're sharp as hell. Like um, I remember just walking around that campus. It felt like I was at the UN. You know what I mean? Like there's like <laughs> e- like there's so many different like types of like colors and like ethnicities. It, it was like they just like cherry pick the best of all over the world and it was at that what was it menlo park or i forget where it was yeah. but like walking around Dude, that campus i feel inspired one one of the guys who would have been reporting to me there he was like yeah as my um like intro pro- like when you get there you do like a demo project or you do like an intro project i guess if you're early on as a engineer or a product manager or something like that um to like just get onboarded you do like a hackathon project and he created basically facebook marketplace in that <laughs> and i ended up running oh that God. for co- like working on that but it was like you know his prototype was like the one of the original genesis things and another guy was like uh i was like what'd you do before this he's like oh i was at microsoft i was like oh okay well, one boring thing to another great and he's like uh he's like, yeah i invented uh the the you know microsoft 365 like uh you know i was like we should go to the cloud and make this a subscription and nobody agreed with me and i just kept working on it for like two years and um, he's like, I just literally oh, had a shit, separate man. machine under my desk where I was like, I'm going to build it on this machine and like, I'm going to do it here. And I was like, oh, okay. So and my takeaway was like, you guys are smart, man. If I come here, I'm going to have to work. Uh, I'm going to have to work hard, <laughs> you know, because you can't just like be lazy around these people. They're great. Um, all right. Which one? Uh, which one am I going to go to now? Let's go Jack Butcher. Uh, Jack Butcher's NFT project, which is uh, called Chex V4. It's a bunch of art around uh, the check mark has uh, recently become the top trading NFT project by volume, uh, surpassing Board Apes. Uh, wow! Guys- I didn't realize it was that big. I wow. think that's probably like on a this week type basis. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, no, no, yeah, not all time in, in terms of like active trading volume, uh, either this week or uh, in a, in a single day. Um, but uh, what do you guys have to say to our boy Jack? Our buddy Jack's getting rich. Love it, dude. So I'm biased. Jack's like a f- close family friend. Him and his wife um, are very I'm, I'm very close with those folks. They are awesome. And Jack is more of an artist. Close enough that he sent you some of these NFTs. Oof. Well, I, I got a that T-shirt close. that says <laughs> Internet on it <laughs> that I he sent me a 30 percent coupon code. Um, <laughs> I got a T-shirt. Jack. uh Dude, Jack's punk rock, man. Jack's more of an artist than he is a businessman. And um, if you go to his website, um, Visualize Value, and you read the copy for the check mark, it is, as we like to say, beautifully done. Uh, beautifully done. It's it's like it's it's just an NFT, but it's just so tasteful. It's classy. Uh, it's delightful. No, he's done a good job, man. I I think it's cool. I still I'm not I'm not an NFT guy. You know, cornrows, <laughs> neck tattoos. <laughs> nfts not for me uh but <laughs> cool that other people have them and that's kind of how i feel about an nft still but if i were going to do an nft it'd be his <laughs> yeah it looks like the last seven days it's done 15 million in sales volume no and, shit uh, and uh it's the fourth ranked one in the last seven days maybe so, uh, so really impressive it, uh it's just a check mark man, right i i <laughs> don't say it like that uh, no is, i'm not is nike, okay is nike just a swoosh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. look i'm not saying it that way uh what is it i didn't actually is it like a you get a it's different color a check check and you put that as your <laughs> no i'm not disrespecting it at all but i'm wondering i'm asking uh because i'm not i'm not in this world it went from eight dollars which was the price that elon was trying to charge for a blue check on twitter right so that's like the, the state the political statement he's making here so it went from eight dollars, which was his like opening price, I think, to f- closer to four thousand dollars per per NFT now. So incredible, incredible surge. Um, and he is like, I don't know, he's not there yet. This is sort of like comparing is a little bit of a stretch of a comparison, but he's kind of like a um, internet Banksy a little bit. Like he does totally. cool shit. That's like it's a commentary on what's going on in the world, and he just the guy just hits. He just yeah, hits man. like I have I seen him do anything no that I'm cuts. not like that's hits only. that's dope. H O hits only, and he's one yeah. of the few people who has H O status. Dude, he makes hits. He uh, so he started out. So Jack's our good buddy. If you don't know Jack, follow him on Twitter. He started out. Uh, he had an ad agency, and then he uh, or he worked at an ad agency, and then he started to make his own ad agency, and it was going okay. And then he created this course called Build Once, Sell Twice, which is hilarious, uh, awesome. amazing name. 
Yeah. Amazing name. And it's about how to productize a service. And he starts selling that course. And he basically was like, I remember I did a call with him and his wife one time when we first started getting to know one another. And they were in like a 400 or 500 square foot studio apartment that they lived in. And they weren't like killing it. And then like he had the year of his life in 2020 or 2021, kills it. Now, if you go to his website, visualizevalue.com, the reason why I love him is you see like his background, you see his courses, but he also has this tab called visuals where you can like look at some of his artwork, but then he has a merch store and his merch store is actually awesome. He has these sweatshirts that say college, kind of like, you know, that, but it says internet. And like, yeah. he just does things like that that are actually awesome. And it like when I go to his site, I'm like, oh, I'm like this dorky internet guy too, but he has merch. I'm inspired to be uh, like a lot cooler like he is. It's awesome. He's, he's badass. I'm a big Jack fan. Me too. Me too. We're, we're, we're big fans of him. All right. What's up? All right. Next up, we got uh, Moonwalkers. Uh, it's a new shoe that's like half a roller skate. I don't know if you guys had a chance to open up and look at it yet, but it allows you to walk and you just walk, uh, but you go seven miles an hour, which is roughly three times as fast as a normal person walks. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's on um, Kickstarter. It's raised $300,000. Uh, the shoes cost more than $1,000. Are you guys at God. Home? You got to see the video. These are so <laughs> stupid and so awesome. They're basically just Heelys for dorks who work at a startup. Uh, like <laughs> Heelys for right? people with no balance. <laughs> yeah, this is which this is crazy. This video is hilarious. Uh, it's really dumb, but kind of awesome. If we did an award for person most likely to have started this that I know, Sam, I think you would have been the guy. <laughs> me dude yeah. this is like the snuggie of like, shoes tell me how you feel about boosted boards well boosted boards are dope right <laughs> it's the same thing dude. <laughs> it's a 25 mile an hour skateboard one for each foot dude <laughs> oh my god this is this is like this is like driving a kia man you're never gonna get late again if you ever like get caught in one of these <laughs> hey, hey i like Kias. um my <laughs> bro you have a bmw uh, I, for a reason <laughs> i saw this on um TikTok and it had millions of likes. I think it had like two or three million likes on this video. And I was like, I could see why it is uh, going to be controversial. It is like visually stunning. You can't tell if it's a joke or if it's serious. Uh, like this literally looks the, like the TikTok and the ad for it literally looks like something from Silicon Valley, the HBO show. Um, like the, the guy, the founder, he's like this guy, you know, Shunji. And he's like this Asian guy who's talking about like, you know, as humans, we've we've always been stuck at two miles an hour, and finally we've broken the barrier. <laughs> we go seven now. He's sitting in front of like these three screens, like these huge MacBook screens of my or iMac screens. Like, dude, what are you programming? Like, <laughs> it's a shoe with it's roller skates. It's dude, it's kind of like roller a, skates. <laughs> it's gonna revolutionize the way that people get hit by cars. <laughs> 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 that's what this is gonna do uh it just we're changing Dude, the world <laughs> you go if you look at what i see you at backers, a time <laughs> the kickstarter backers are only personal injury lawyers who are like oh yeah no brainer <laughs> business expense write this one off <laughs> Dude, it, this is just segue 2.0 it's really stupid but also kind of cool um yeah i just uh i mean this is like uh this is like guys who wear like their cell phones outside of their pocket or who wear a jawbone 24-7. Um, it's this is that niche. Uh, not for me. <laughs> I'll right. give it the Andrew Tate. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> this data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better. Let's do one more. What's the, you want to do the tooth fairy thing? Yeah, okay, I got a news story for you. Uh, my sister has three daughters, um, two of which are losing their baby teeth. And um, I was talking to my niece the other day, and she tells me that uh, she lost a tooth. I said, wow, fantastic. You're going to give it to the, you put it under your pillow for the tooth fairy? No, I threw it away. You threw it away? You threw it in the garbage can? Yeah, I threw it away. Why? Well, my last tooth was under there for two months and the tooth fairy never came. So, <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't want to, I, I don't want to even try anymore. Uh, that's the first, first story I hear. And I'm looking at my sister. She's like making eye contact. Like, I'll tell you later. I'll, I'm sorry. I know. I know. I effed up. Then the younger daughter loses her tooth yesterday. 
puts it under uh, her pillow with a note. Here's what the note says. It's uh, I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. But basically, it says something to the effect of, uh, um, Dear Tooth Fairy, um, you didn't come last night, but that's okay. I, uh, I'm leaving it here again. And it says something like, you don't have to leave any money. Just draw a picture of yourself. I want to see what you look like. <laughs> and then that's the note. And she didn't do anything again. So the news, the, the question, fellas, does my sister need to just check herself into jail? For bad yeah, mom of the year. The what the <laughs> hell? What's your deal? What's what, what, <laughs> just give like a few dollars or like you know, like two some months, Doritos or something. Months, just put a little something straight, on the side. She forgot. <laughs> How do you forget that? I, unbelievable. She texted me. She said that herself. She goes, Should I just send myself to jail? Uh, because I'm such a bad mom. <laughs> that's so, crazy to me. That's that's my news story of the week. That that's what I pay attention to. What's a tooth go for nowadays? Five dollars? <laughs> I don't know, dude. Back in my day, that was you know like five like buck, or, or like if your parents get cheeky, they're like, "Here's a two dollar bill." Yeah, it's less than the going rate, but it's rare. It's a two dollar bill, <laughs> you know. Like I got a five dollar the- once, uh, and that was like a huge deal. I don't know what's a tooth go for. I feel like people do more of that. Ben, what, what were you? Did, you? did you get tooth money when you were growing up? I got a quarter. I d- I don't feel like I grew up oh, poor, wow. but now I feel like I grew up poor. <laughs> Yeah, I would get like a quarter or a dollar. But then one time I got a tooth knocked out and I got five bucks for it. <laughs> That's some guilt money right there. That <laughs> It was guilt money. Yeah, blood money. I fell and got it knocked out. So I got five bucks for that one. But I don't know what a tooth would go for now. Um, ben, do this uh, Do this other one you have, the Snowden one. I don't know if you've seen this one. Yeah, so <laughs> Edward Snowden goes live on a conference. And uh, the, the conference is, um, I don't know, it just screams like... Uh, F- fake Zoom conference, right? The, the let's see what it's called. It's called uh, private investor conference or something private like that. Investor like the, conference. the most generic name of all time. Yes, and so uh, this guy is uh, interviewing Edward Snowden for his private investor conference. He shows up and immediately pulls up an article that says uh, "man busted for four point four million dollar Ponzi scheme," and he says, "Is this you?" And the host, the interviewer, says. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. He goes, all right, well, I think it's important to tell people this kind of stuff. Bye. And hangs up on him. Uh, He he got paid to to come do a keynote. He starts his, like, you know, keynote Q&A or whatever, and just screen shares instead (laughs) the the news article that this guy who's hosting this event is a former, like, you know, Ponzi skiver that was like, you know, uh, got in trouble for that. And the chat is just like, wow, wow. Boom. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> it's the best. Like, uh, you know, I don't want to go to many webinars, but I wish I was at this one. <laughs> and shout out to Edward Snowden. You know, whistleblower is going to blow. Dude, and, I'm watching uh, this. Yeah, he went guess, for it. You, you, have you ever seen the subreddit? It's on the subreddit called Watch People Die. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one. Uh, yeah, this is going to be at the top. <laughs> sorry. I, I screwed that up. Watch people die inside. Die inside. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, inside. Whoops. Yeah, I, the inside's a big thing. Uh, w- uh, next to, uh, uh, there's a subreddit called Absolute Units. Have you seen that one? I love <laughs> yeah. that one. <laughs> just like a buff dog or like a pimple that's huge. It's called like, like a cucumber <laughs> that's like just too strong to be cut. <laughs> yeah, I love Absolute Units. But I subscribe to Absolute Units and I subscribe to Watch People Die in the uh, Watch People Die Inside. This is one of them. Uh, this video is on there. Uh, well, do you see the reaction? Did you watch the guy's reaction? So the guy goes, yeah. yes, that's me. And then Snowden's like, well, I think people should know, you know, who they're getting into business with or whatever. So I don't feel good about this. I'm, I'm not doing this. So he leaves. And then the guy doesn't know what to do. And he just shrinks and he just goes, um, okay, I'm going to, we're going to take a break. And, um, yeah, I'm going to come back. And, and he just doesn't know what to say. And it's like, Man, if there was ever a time to be like, hey, um, you know, I know that looked bad, but uh, oh I, I'm happy to explain and, uh, you know, explain what happened and, and you know, clarify for everybody. You know, I could do that right here, right now. No problem. Um, Dude, and there's people instead, like he shrinks. There's people in the chat saying like, hey, Edward, are flying saucers real? Like, and people on Reddit are like, yeah, no wonder why these people fall for this. Uh, this guy's the private stance. investor club. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a good video. I'm gonna have to watch this. Um, dude, I've been following some of these like Ponzi scheme guys on um like they do all these like um for example, there was one. What's that? There's a Twitch guy with dreadlocks, he's a black dude, not uh the famous one who boxes, but like another one who's like more hated. 
and uh, he's like loud and cocky. I forget his name, but um, very punchable guy. Um, but he was like a, a, a crypto company like paid him to do like an ad and they're in the background talking about and he forgets yeah, that he's recording and he's like, dude, I can't believe people are going to buy this crap or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? What's that guy's name? I've, he's I've very hateable guy. I don't know. I don't know who that guy is, but I've seen the clip and yeah, the, like the the owner or the promoter of the thing was behind him and they're they're talking. I don't know what exactly what he said. I don't think he said that. He said something else, but it was something that something like you know, I don't want to promote the hot this crap picked anymore. It up. Yeah, the, yeah, the hot mic picked it up and people were like, "Wow, dude, disgusting." The 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 amount of like the the Twitch and I think I said Twilio. I meant Twitch. The Twitch and like YouTube audience that buys this crap, it is crazy, man. It is absolutely crazy to me. Um. I can't believe people do that, but yeah, this was a good one. How did this guy afford Edward Snowden? <laughs> Dude, you know how Ponzi schemers work. They know how to build, you know, they, they got to build this, uh, this shell game, this appearance of, uh, of legitimacy. That's crazy to me. Uh, it's the, it's the private investment club. It's the largest, uh, largest real estate club in Canada. That's like his shtick. Uh, that's crazy to me. Um, anyway, yeah, that's a good video. I'm going to have to watch that. All right, that's it. We're out of here. Boys react.